Welcome to Pharmacy View, technology and pharmacy business podcast series, where we provide regular interviews with pharmacists and key industry people within the Australian pharmacy and associated industry. In each podcast, we look to discuss aspects of pharmacy operation and how technology is improving or interacting with each guest's current role or pharmacy-related business. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, and today's guest is sponsored by Shopfront Solutions, leading the way in digital marketing and communications, providing a cloud-based platform for pharmacies to manage all of their digital messaging and print-based collateral. For more information on the Shopfront Solutions digital platform, simply go to the website at shopfrontsolutions.com.au. I'm talking today with Brianne Shepherd, the 2019 Pharmacy Guild Maxagesic Pharmacy Assistant of the Year. Welcome, Brianne. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting you again at APP this year, not realising that we had actually met several years ago when we were both working for Terry White Chemists. So uh, I was out and about in the national role and you were working in one of the uh, the pharmacies in and around Newcastle. So for anyone who doesn't know uh, you, who is Brianne Shepherd? Okay, so I would have met you when I was quite young, just a baby in pharmacy, probably about 16 years old, which is when I started, which is 17 years ago now. I've gone from working in cash and wrap through to stock control and onto retail management. And um, I've been lucky enough to do that across some of the larger banner groups, as you mentioned, as well as some small independent pharmacies. You've already mentioned my biggest claim to fame, which was that in 2019, I was named the Pharmacy Guild Maxagesic Pharmacy Assistant of the Year and have since gone on to work for Pharmacy Alliance as a pharmacy group manager in New South Wales. My current role has given me the opportunity to work with larger demographics of independent pharmacies, pharmacists, and of course, pharmacy assistants, and I can help build their front of shop business and professional services in this current role. So I'm quite lucky I'm out there doing what I, what I love every day with independent pharmacies. Yeah, and Brian, that's a really good introduction because I know from my previous history, one of the things I used to love, and and I often got in trouble for it, was you know not spending enough time in the head office, at such, and and more time out in the in the pharmacies. But uh, I'm sure you would agree that one of the great advantages is as you get to go and see different pharmacies, meet with different people and different teams, you really do learn a lot as an individual that you can then share with others. Oh, 100%. An upside um, to my role is that now I've got more exposure to the wider range of IT programs that are available to pharmacies. So when I'm working with these independent pharmacies on the road, I'm, I'm stepping outside of those four walls of the office, like you said, or the four walls of a single pharmacy. Um, and it's important to note that with independent pharmacies, it's not always a one size fits all solution. So I've had to learn and adapt to a multitude of programs and services to be able to advise my members on the right solutions moving forward. And you can't do that from within the office, that's for sure. Yeah. And and look, one of the, other, the comments that I love hearing when I get out and about is that our pharmacy is different and our customers are different and that, that won't work here. And and I, I respectfully say that in many cases, that is possibly true. But it doesn't mean that you you can you know, allow someone to become stagnant and think that that's the only way things could be done. Oh, it's always about growth and, and finding what works for you. And I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert in change management here. However, I have had the pleasure of living through many IT advances myself in front of shop in some of the pharmacies I worked in previously. And that includes multiple point of sale conversions, banner group changes, you know, and that that leads to all sorts of system and protocols enhancements, um, introduction of PDA ordering machines, countless ticketing programs, clocking and roster solutions, and yep. of course the rise of social media, right, which not only plays a huge role in our local area marketing plans, but has worked its way, unfortunately, into many HR discussions. So um, with all that in mind, I would like to think I have some idea of what goes into a good change management plan. But every pharmacy is different and it's got to work for them first and foremost. Yeah. And, and and again, I think that's a really important point that we had discussed prior to starting today was that one of the biggest challenges around IT in any business, but we'll focus on pharmacy here, is that change management process. In some instances, when you're dealing with independent businesses, a a, a new IT platform might be the right call or right, or right decision for the, for the customer and for the business. But if you actually don't have the bulk of the team on side, it won't work. Oh, 100%. The success of any transformation that you wish to implement in your pharmacy rides on your ability to manage change, change within your team. And it starts from the top and how we communicate that down is key. Yeah. And, and again, I'm sure you've come across this in your own um, management style and technique, but as you're now visiting different pharmacies, 
Pharmacists are, are really, really good in terms of patient and health care and in terms of running business, but it can often be said that team leadership and team coaching isn't necessarily a forte, and it's something that uh, they can often uh, call out for help with. So, uh, you know, how do you go about that in terms of your different pharmacies and businesses that you've interacted with? You've spot on again, Scott. They don't teach this in pharmacy school. They touch on it, but unfortunately, not a lot of thought is given to running retail pharmacy in a large team. So, some of the support I'm able to offer my members is putting together a strong change management plan and, and getting the team to take ownership of that. So first of all, we need to start with acknowledgement and understanding of the need for a change. Whether I'm talking to a pharmacist, retail manager or pharmacy assistant, I need to highlight where the current system is failing them and where the new system's capabilities are there to help fill those gaps. And we often don't know what we don't know. So seeking advice and doing your own research is really important there. That definitely flows on to communication and it has to be a two-way street. Encourage the input and develop the correct strategy together with your key team members. This will work twofold. You know, you need their input and support to make sure you're hitting the mark, but also their buy-in is super important to guarantee they also take ownership of the success of this proposed change themselves, you know. Yep, yep. Push back from them later. We want them on board with us and we want them pushing for the success of this program. Yeah, how important in that instance, and I, and I know many of the pharmacists that uh, I've got, I've had the pleasure of meeting over many years are really good at talking with other pharmacists. And so obviously, you know, collegiate referrals is, is, is quite good in terms of getting some change happening or, or some, um, some positive connection there. But how does that work in terms of retail managers? Is there much uh, discussion between retail managers from other pharmacies that helps here, or does that really become a silo? So... Personal testimonials are very important, Scott. I encourage anyone who's implementing a new program not to just listen to me or, or the supplier who's, who's presenting to you, but to go and speak to other pharmacists who have implemented those programs and speak to the floor staff as well if, if we're talking about front of shop changes here and get their feedback of where it fell over for them or, or where, they're, where they've found it successful. I think that's really important. Again, going back to your research is really vital in making these decisions. Yeah, no, for sure. So on that note, what's some of the um, technology platforms that you're involved with at the moment that you think are, are winners in terms of uh, what's happening in the space? Oh, now, you know, I don't want to plug any preferred. That's okay. No, I'm not saying any, any are good or bad, but just is, if there's something out there that, that people should be investigating at the moment. But yeah, if I had to pick three IT enhancements that you should be considering in your pharmacy, in, in your front of shop, it would definitely, the first thing would be a ticketing program that integrates with your point of sale. You know, it's essential in growing your business is having ticketing on the shelf. And again, I don't want to play favorites, but personally for me, Shopfront is one of the easiest programs to teach PAs and retail managers, and it integrates with the four main software suppliers. This is a quick and cost-effective strategy to implement your ticketing. And we know that 70% of the buying decisions are made at the shelf's edge and 19% of customers won't pick up a product without a ticket on it. Like there's your return on investment. There's the easiest decision to make this year, I think. Yeah. And look, just on that, I mean, that's it's it's basic retail pharmacy 101. You know, I still get surprised when I go into any business to have a look at a product on the shelf and I can't find the price. And, and again, what you're doing for me in that instance is that if it's of interest to me and you haven't actually put a price in front of me, then I'm actually going to go online. And the minute I go online, I'm going to actually know the price that's available in the marketplace. But secondly, I'm a real tragic shopper these days. And, and whether I'm in the supermarket or in a major <laughs> retail pharmacy or elsewhere, um, I actually hunt out those special tickets because you just never know what kind of special or bargain is, is out there, do you? Yeah, Woolies and Coles have definitely trained us to go looking for those special tickets. You know, we might only be saving 20 cents, but that's what we're drawn to and that's what works. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah the, the topical item, whether it's cold or flu, or uh, or whether it's a reduced to clear item in the uh, in the cold supermarket, they uh, they certainly get my attention because it just could be something you throw in the cupboard to make a meal with one day, That's from from that perspective. Okay, so so outside of the ticketing platform, what other tech platforms are you involved with at the moment? Your software. Sometimes we're happy in our own misery with our point of sale or dispense software, but if your system does not have the capabilities or they are no longer making the enhancements you need, then make the jump. Every day you wait, it's costing you money. Everyone has their own preferred, and I've and I've had extensive training across Quorum's admin for spread simple. So I know the devil in each one. I'm happy to have those discussions offline. Probably the biggest pushback I get from pharmacists, though, is that they don't want to upset their front of shop staff who've been using the same program on the tills for 20 years. But the funny yeah. thing is, is that teaching the ladies on the tills is the easiest bit, sorry, and gentlemen on the tills is the easiest bit. And 
if you are aligned with the right support team, um, the process can run quite smoothly. And I guess that, that's where I get to step in and helping you make that right decision. Yeah. And, and look, certainly, again, from, from my background perspective, I think all of the major dispensary point of sale systems are very, very good. They're all un- you've got their own unique characters, that, which, will, which will be the difference between someone making a decision for them or not. But, but again, I, I can't tell you that there's a bad one out there at the moment, and, and I guess nor would I from that perspective. <laughs> yeah, treading carefully on that one, but always happy to have those discussions. <laughs> yeah. And probably lastly, my last tip would be if you're not using a PDA machine or equivalent scanner gun in the pharmacy, again, it has to integrate with one of those point of sale systems. But I would yeah. challenge everyone out there to work out your cost of wages, wasted on marking off orders, taking in stock takes, ordering, printing tickets versus purchasing a gun. You know, and your supplier should have already negotiated a sharp price for you to integrate with their system. So I would challenge everyone to do some homework and work that out and then investigate PDA machine for sure. So what are some of the advantages that, that would, you know, if someone's not using the PDA machine today, what's some of the advantages that they might pick up from that? Probably the simplest one is your daily ordering. Like I'm still seeing retail managers or stock controllers walk around these large stores with a notepad writing down PDEs. So you might not think that takes a lot of time, but usually around about an hour to go through that, right? And that can be done in 10 minutes with a gun. And the the bonus is you can get a junior to do that. Any junior can go around and scan gaps. And marking off your orders. Like I see stock controllers standing there for hours marking off orders. You either need to go back to your wholesaler and look at what the error rate is and if that's worth you spending that time and wages or even using a gun to scan every product will halve that time Um, and of course stock taking people just aren't stock taking anymore because it's too hard a gun can help alleviate some of that pain and I definitely feel for everyone it is June I know everyone's stock taking at the moment yeah so that's a good segue into your do you have a preference for stock taking the whole store once a year or doing a section each month Rolling stock takes are so important. And to be honest, going back to scanning those gap lines, are we reviewing why there's a gap on the shelf? Is it because the stock on hand's out or the supply is not right? So I think rolling stock takes are important, but as a necessity, at least twice a year. You know, if, yeah. if, if you've got a strong stock controller, there's no reason why they can't be checking it every time they do their direct supplier orders or their bulk order either. Yeah, and I guess that leads nicely then into data management. And and look, we we've all worked in the pharmacy industry in in varying roles and varying positions and varying locations. And so we have a healthy respect for what the daily life looks like for a pharmacy assistant or or a, a pharmacist. But at the end of the day, whilst the priority is on customer care, you've still got to run a successful business, don't you? You do, you do. Customers come first, and tasks should come last. But you need to look at um, how your data is affecting your figures that you're giving to your accountant and tax time, you know, I found in the last few weeks that there's a lot of stores out there, out there who aren't doing minus GP reports, who aren't doing minus stock on hand reports, and they're making huge impacts on their bottom line GP if they're reporting that um, the point of sale system's pumping out that they hand on to their accountant. So it, it is really important and you need to have a basic system to review that weekly, monthly, yearly to make sure your data is tight, but also think about the money you're losing from the data being out, you're purchasing stock continuously. Like we've all we've all done it with the melanin, bought 100 boxes of 100 melanin instead of just the one. You know, and yeah. if the data is not correct, it's just costing you money. And that's how we get stuck with these products in the storeroom that we can't get rid of. Rid of. So, so on that basis, there's there's a couple of I guess simple and key regular tasks. So, so certainly daily, weekly would be the the simple visual check of out of stocks on the shelf. It, does the does the fact that it's not there match with the computer that, that says yes, there's no stock there and there's some being ordered on the way? or the stock's not there, it's been stolen, or the stock's not there, it's been sold under a different code somehow, way, shape, or form, because not being there is a, is a potential lost sale, isn't it? Potentially, yeah. Like, that's just the start of the issues there, Scott, not to mention yeah. that, you know, you could be saying you've got thousands of dollars of stock on hand that you don't have, and that's that's the importance of that data control. But you need to have a system that works with you. If your current point of sale and software isn't doing that and helping you achieve those goals, then why are we paying them money monthly? Let's move on to a system that can help support us. Yeah. And and you mentioned before the um, the negative margin report. So I know from my experience that some of these reports you have to pull up manually, some that you can actually automate them. How often do you think someone should be checking negative margin reports? Negative GP reports should be weekly yeah. because once okay. you've sold that stock at that negative GP, you can't get that back. You know, that, that's what's going into your system. And I see that on our SMS reports that I'm privy to for my members all the time and I'm bringing to their, their attention every month. So there's got to be a standard list of reports that you're running weekly and again, monthly. And who's in charge of that? Have you given them the time? Are you giving that important process the love and respect that it deserves? So um, often, more often than not, we aren't. 
unfortunately. So, so if a pharmacy doesn't have a really good uh, pharmacy group manager like yourself, is it a diary reminder every, every Friday morning? Is it like how, how would you recommend that someone manage these negative reports? I'd be shocked to go in if you had a stock controller or a retail manager that didn't have a daily, weekly, monthly checklist. Again, I'm happy to talk to anyone about this offline as well. So yep. definitely diarised, but everyone should have their KPIs. Everyone should have their position descriptions. And this is this is another thing that I'm finding is lacking in community pharmacy are these HR discussions that are vital to ensuring your shop is running correctly. And, and I guess, again, there's there's enough group and guild support for pharmacy members around that anyway. So again, it's it's there. It's a case of asking for it or checking for it or checking with your pharmacy group manager or your brand group manager. Yeah. And if you're struggling, strategically align yourself with someone who can help you. Yeah. From that perspective. So you mentioned before about checking off the loads from the wholesalers. And again, I, I haven't seen it for some time, but maybe I just haven't gone into the right pharmacy. So, so you're saying that there would still be instances of stock controllers receiving stock, laying it all out, ticking it off a, off a manual paper checklist. Is that That's what you're in- indicating? Yes, I, I have seen people who are still doing daily orders and doing that. So ordering every day, not doing any forward charging or bulk ordering. And then on the other side, I've seen those who are ordering six weeks of stock at the first of the month and marking off every single packet and going digging for that one Panamax that's cost them a dollar, you know, and wasting an hour on looking for that. So that's quite surprising to me still in this day and age. Age, Yeah. And look, I, I would go back uh, when I was probably 17, which is a lot longer than you. But in reality, I, I remember that with a particular business that I worked for, we got to the point with the wholesaler that we were accepting most of the order unless it was over $20 in value or, or more than three units. And uh, and we check this probably every three months, but in the main, it meant that we actually got the stock on the shelf much quicker. And you were then just focusing on the bigger ticket items and not the $1 Panamaxes, for example. Yeah. And I still encourage that. Anything that's over $50, or obviously a fridge DD, high cost yep. drug needs to be checked off. But your daily ordering, you know, mark it off and get it on the shelf and get the stock sold. We've ordered it because there's none on the shelf. Every every minute we wait, we're potentially losing a sale. Um, not to mention, again, the wages that go into that. Where can that time be spent elsewhere serving customers? Yeah, and, and doing other things. So so I guess this, the, the wrap-up of that discussion is around data management on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis is a, a technology efficiency that if a pharmacy is not employing it today should really have a, dis- have a look at it or have a discussion with someone about how to look at it. Definitely. It's a necessity and it's costing you money again. Every day that you wait, it's costing you more and more money. And and look, on that basis, I, I remember one of the things that I would do when I visited a pharmacy is, um, and I'm sure you probably do the same thing, I, I would go out and have a look in the stock controllers area for the claims stock. And, and I'd start asking questions about how long something had been there because you'd often find hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of stock um, sitting, you know, waiting for a claim to happen that you know has been paid for effectively. Yeah, I'm a stock controller at heart and I completely know what you're talking about. And it's really frustrating, especially off the back of COVID with suppliers not calling on stores. Yeah. So I would, again, encourage and challenge everyone to have those important conversations with their reps. If not, go go above them or go to the office about dead stock you've got sitting there. Yeah. Again, you need to be reviewing that data on your shelf and your stock turns. If you've got less than five stock turns on something per year, why are we leaving it on our shelf to go out of date? Let's be proactive and get it moving through. And you should be able to print those reports from your point of sale. And if you can't, let's find a program that can. From that perspective. No, that's cool. So we might then just jump back again for anyone listening today. We've spoken a lot today about the the managing of people in a pharmacy around this technology and this data management. We, we would be aware that some pharmacies are quite good at this. They're, they're, they're a mature enough pharmacy that they've got into some really good routines or they're part of a group or a brand or, or a group of pharmacies in a, in a business sense that are, I guess, controlled from a central point of view. But there's many pharmacies out there that are individual owner operators and even young you know, first-time owners. If you were to give them you know, two or three kind of key tips of advice as to things that they should be looking at, and if they're doing it, great, it's a tick, but if they're not doing it, then maybe it's something that they should look at pretty quickly. Yeah, look, if you're doing it alone and you're an independent, a true independent, you need to have someone on your team who is strong in retail. That's that's what I do know. You can't survive purely on your dispensary anymore. So I would look at who's on your team within the pharmacy. If you want to keep it close to home, get a strong retail manager slash stock controller, who's also a good PA, obviously, who can help you figure out what kind of reporting you need to do each month and make sure that your business is remaining profitable or and looking profitable, most importantly. Yep. 
if you're concerned about the programs you have in regards to point of sale, ticketing, you know, not having a PDA machine and every other type of program that's out there, reach out to these suppliers, have them come and present to you, get them to work for your business and make an informed decision about what your budget is to spend on programs like this. And again, going back to what it's saving you on wages. And lastly, if you're looking all that at all of that and that's too hard, again, seek out me. I'd love to come and help. But you don't know what you don't know, essentially, and you need to find someone that can help you develop a process and program to help keep your business rolling through. Streamline, because again, the, 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 there's a couple of things I guess that happen with technology over time. Actually, there's many things that have happened with technology over time, but certainly you've touched on a little bit on the account side of things, and that is that you know many pharmacies, even as you know, two or three years ago, were possibly waiting on an, on an accounts report to happen at the end of a quarter or the end of a six months or the end of a year before they really knew what was happening in their business. But the reality is that dispensary and point of sale systems for many, many years have been able to report on a daily basis. And and so if you're still waiting on your accountant's quarterly or end of year report, you it's too late, isn't it? You've, you've missed the boat in terms of correcting or fixing things and potentially cost yourself some money. Yeah, you need to be proactive. It's your business. This is this is your lifeblood, right? This is what you're putting your blood, sweat and tears in. Be proactive. Don't be scared to be proactive and ask questions either. And you're right, your point of sale system can provide that to you. So go back to them and say, I need a full training. I need to understand what reporting I need to be doing. You can't wait for that BAS statement. Yeah. And look, Brian, I think what's come out of this discussion today, we, we may have a discussion offline about another episode later on and, and just focus on you know maybe what the top five or six things from a, a front of shop retail manager stock controller should be looking at. But um, in terms of what we've discussed today, is there anything else on your mind that you'd like to share today that we haven't discussed? I've got plenty to share, Scott, and I don't think we have enough time. You can tell I'm really passionate about retail pharmacy, which is why I'm happy to have these discussions anytime with anyone offline. Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat. Just take back that ownership of your business. That's probably my number one tip. And don't be scared to get involved in the retail part of your pharmacy. It's a crucial part. So get amongst it. Yeah, and and I think that's a really important point too, because even from my own business background and several pharmacists that I spoke to at APP that originally weren't going to go, but then made the effort to come, they they see it as that point in time where they're not rocking up to their pharmacy in the morning and straight into business and trying to get on top of everything. When when you're away from the business, you actually get to talk with peers, you get to talk with other people, but more importantly, you actually get to stop and actually have a bit of a clear mind about things that you could potentially do differently when you go back. That's one of the greatest advantages of something like an APP, isn't it? Industry events are so important. You need to step out of those four walls of your pharmacy, if not for your own sanity, and to help for your team to give them a break as well. No, I think it's really important and you don't know what you don't know. You need to get out there and see what kind of advances are happening. And networking is really important. You know, I take something away from every conversation that I had at APP and implemented several things that my members weren't aware of. So it's super important to get out there and, and make sure you're always learning and growing and developing. From that perspective, and look, I'm I'm aware, and I'm sure you are aware. Well, there's with this, the advent of social media these days. There's some really good pharmacist uh, Facebook groups, WhatsApp discussion groups. But I guess it comes back down to you just need to find one that you're comfortable with, it, don't you? Because they that's your peer uh, communication that's really important. There's a lot of um, definitely in Newcastle. There's a lot of local Facebook groups for young pharmacists. But I know in each state there's some good pharmacy groups, and for pharmacy assistants as well. There's a lot out there. I think LinkedIn's been Um, a really good source of information for me personally. And I'm seeing more pharmacists jump on LinkedIn. If you're following the right people in the right groups, there's a lot of information there. And obviously things like reading the pharmacy daily and any other communication that you can, taking that time out of your day just to keep abreast of what's happening is really important as well. If, If you're going it alone, you know, if you're a true independent, that's really important. As well. Brian, that's been really good to chat today. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of our time, but I can tell that there's lots more information in your head. So uh, for anyone listening today, uh, we will um, do another session or an episode with uh, Brian at some stage in the next couple of weeks, months, and, and focus on a couple of specific items. So in terms of anyone listening today, if there's something specifically you maybe wanted Brian to address, um, just shoot us a message through and we'll make sure that's on the topic of discussion. So Brian, thank you very much for your time today. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you for having me. That was really fun and I um, look forward to the next one, Scott. My pleasure. Talk soon. Thank you for listening today. Pharmacy View is a technology-focused podcast provided by Melbourne-based business Arian Technologies and Shopfront Solutions. Over the podcast series, our guests include pharmacists, retail managers, 
wholesalers, suppliers, and industry technology partners. If you would like further information on our podcast series or to participate in one of our episodes, feel free to send me a message or touch base through the Pharmacy View website, pharmacyview.com.au.